Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is the Wix Online meeting number 8.5, or uh, the one after meeting 8. Uh, this means it's a Tuesday, uh, October 29th, only a couple days off of Halloween when we hope we have some good stuff coming out, and another triage day. So, uh, or another meeting day, rather. Today is just triage. So, uh, since today is just triage, let's go do triage. 558, five, that's where we're starting a little bit higher than when we left off, but let's get going. Melt doesn't work. Well, yeah, this is uh, just missing DTF assemblies in the uh, bin directory. Oh, probably cleaned it up and removed it when we probably shouldn't have, huh? Yeah. Installer package? Interesting. Melt needs the package thing? Interesting. All right, whatever. Um, and then probably uses the cab stuff. All right, fine. We should fix that, I assume, for 3.8, right? This is, yeah. Yeah. Fortunately. Um, um, who's taking this? You can take a swing at this, or? I guess I'll, yeah, I want to make sure we get, get it done as possible. All right, all right, all right, all right. C++ project type shows in Visual Studio integrated shell. Wow. Uh, I suppose we could fix that in 3x. <laughs> I'm sure this has always been this way. I'd have to go back and look. Um, the I assume so. Uh, the reason is we condition the managed project templates based on the presence of those project systems in the appropriate version of Visual Studio. I see. We don't do the same thing uh, for, C++. for the... C++ template. No. We can fix it, but we're not going to hold 3.8 for it. I would agree with that. Burn should be transformable by end user. Extract the bootstrapper. Uh, dark. <laughs> well, and rebuild. Yeah, and, uh, well, fine, yeah, Teach, we should teach Dark how to decompile a bundle completely anyway. That would be cool, but okay. Um, 4X. Uh, <laughs> sure, if someone wanted to make all that work, I could see it happening in 4X. I don't know. I mean, it'd be cool if, like, the standard BA had a way of, you know, you're giving it a text file that, you know, would customize all the things that a standard BA could customize. Although, I guess maybe that doesn't make sense because there aren't that many things you can customize in a BA, but in the standard BA. Uh, I don't know, what is this, admin mode? I mean... Yeah, I mean, th th this is really, like, for Visual Studio, they solved this in the BA, which is right. probably the right Which is what you to have do. to do in the end, because the BA is going to make yeah. all the decisions. So, I mean... And the BA needs to be aware of what can be changed, too. I mean, it's really easy to get into a spot where you've baked in assumptions that if people can arbitrarily change them... Oh, yeah. yeah. And I know the Visual Studio install is extremely complex as it is, so, uh, I mean, sure, it'd be a, I don't know, what is this, a standard thing for standard BA? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure what it would do there. I'm not sure what burn would do. Mm, I agree, it's not an engine thing, it's a... It's a BA thing. It's BA and tools thing. Uh, this is kind of sounding like resolution meh. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, if the, but it's, it's a lot of it's in the BA, so I'm not even sure what we would do. I mean, because the standard BA doesn't have any standard customizations right now. I guess it'd be a thing if we fix standard or improve standard BA's customization stuff, we could think about it, but yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot to send that mail. Um, yeah, we still don't have that resolution. Something like that. It could be done, maybe. I don't know how the engine would do it, though. No, it's definitely a BA challenge. BA issue. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I'm with you. I'm okay with 4X. Yeah, I mean, it's not, yeah, we're not going to get three. Right, so. No. Uh, set up, Wix setup.xc. What Wix setup? Oh, Wix 3.8 has layout. Oh, we probably... Oh, do we not implement the question mark? Probably not. Funny. Uh, probably...
probably not a four. I'd put it in three X. I don't know if I'd hold three eight for that UI, but it would be nice if it had that UI. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Oh well. Yes, that'd be awesome to have that fixed. I'm sure it's just some screen we never wrote. Um, uh, uninstall screen can be closed. Press Alt F4. No, <laughs> yeah, that's probably that's probably wrong. Probably should have canceled. Yeah, we should fix that. I don't know that we're going to hold 3.8 because it's always been this way. I'm sure it's been that way since 3.6. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we should fix it. But, yeah, 3x should fix that. Oh, I see. Okay. I, uh, I forget with our custom Chrome there, we don't have a... Uh, there's no close button. There's no close button. Yeah, so it's a matter of blocking the closed, Alt F4 or whatever. They, yeah. The Windows closed message that comes in. So. Right. Yeah, I don't care. Don't put our stuff in the GAC. <laughs> it's not supposed to be in the GAC, but whatever. Um, but yeah, that probably would fix it. Because um. this tells us to use the assembly path and not the GAC, which is what it's intended for, right? And the project references, I think that's what I saw when I was digging around. I, th so. I thought it just added the copy local metadata. What I, I forget, whatever the thing is. It'll make a local copy. Well, that's probably fine. Yeah, I I don't want to risk changing existing behavior. So do we do this in three X and? Yeah, let's put it in three X, and uh, we can pull it into uh, uh, three nine. Yeah. Okay. We we'll have to open three nine soon. Let me get the signing stuff out of the way, then we can get three nine opened probably next week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think as soon as we ship the RC, we can open up 3.9. Yeah, okay. You need more work for me to do. Just what I needed. All right, incorrect operation for detect only. I remember this bug. From way back when. Yeah, we should fix this, back, right? Back in old bugs. This, this yeah, is this is... By design. Well, the problem, the problem is we, we refer to it as a major upgrade, even when it's a detect only entry. And that's confusing. I mean, that, at least it's we should confusing, fix that. Yeah. At least and we well, the problem that. is we log it as a major upgrade. No, we should fix that. I mean, yeah, that, that logic, This I remember this part of code, burn, and this yeah, is, this is non-trivial blocks of code in burn, so. Exactly right. We, we should fix it, because if it's wrong and it's getting stuff in the log, in the log ugh, if it's logging wrong, it's just going to make our lives worse yep. long term. But yeah, we should fix this, but not in 3.8. Agreed. Yeah. Because it was in 3.6. Yeah, eventually we yeah, should go back in here and fix it without breaking all the other code around it. So yeah, we should totally do that. Burn will use incorrect package. Yeah, this one too. I remember this bug. If you get the old, if you get a bad thing, and it burn will always look for the local version instead of asking for the download version. And it's it's a it's again the code in there is a little trickier than I would like. We could look at trying to fix this in 3x. Um, the code is just kind of twisty. That makes that hard. Unfortunately, twisty. It's one of those areas of burn that should be improved, but in a big way. But anyway, um, 3x, I guess. Yeah, we're looking at. Oh, we should definitely fix it. It's not good. If you get in this state, it's definitely not good. Fortunately, it's not. You don't normally do. Doesn't normally happen. Set up an audit for that. Oh, so this is a feature request. Um, 
cool. So they want something for the service config to set or permissions on services. I think that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to do that. I don't know. I don't know how much more work it would be to do that, but yeah. I'm okay with this in three X. Yeah, I don't think it'll be. I don't think it, if it's breaking, of course it goes to four, but it should be fine in three X. Yeah. Light errors are not written to standard error. Yeah, we've used standard out because everybody else uses standard out. Um, I don't want to add a command line switch. And Blair wants to upvote it. Um, yeah, I haven't checked that upvoting. Um, this would be a 4x. But yeah, we'd have to take it in 4x because it is a, a breaking change. I'm okay with making it a clean cut in 4x. Or, well, sorry. I guess actually it's say I'm okay with it being a clean cut in 4.0. Yeah, right. It has to be in 4.0, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, let's put it in 4.0, see if anybody takes it, and if nobody does, then we kill it or something. Okay. I think that, and can you put that in the bug, that this goes in 4.0 for breaking, and if it doesn't make it, we probably don't, we don't put it in 5. I don't see why we'd bring it a 5 again. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Util extension, file search of util max, but not of it, min size, max size are not available. Yeah, sure, that'd be cool. Man, talk about some typos. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, I agree, we should totally do that because I know MSI supports it, so we should could totally do that. Merge all of the chums into one chum. Uh, I don't know if we want to do that. I thought DTF API and DTF were merged. Didn't that happen? Like, I th I'm pretty sure they're linked or something like that. Where if you're in one, you get, th those two are linked. Yeah. Um, I suppose we could try linking Wix Chum to them, but then doesn't it show in the searches? I don't know. Wix Chum is about Wix, and the DTF stuff's about DTF today, and I don't know. I I, I saw this bug when it came in, and I'm just like, why? All right. No, uh, unless anybody else out there. I'm not, we're not getting a lot of support out there. I don't see any reason to combine them. Linking might be interesting, maybe. But even then, it's like DTF could link into Wix, I suppose. No. But I, I actually can't think of a reason No. to, to do it. And yeah. I can't think of a reason why Wix would link into DTF. So I'm like... No. And, from a build perspective, no, I don't want yeah, to. I, yeah, fine. Do that. Done. Document setup built. Oh, that's easy. This is fixed. <laughs> well. <laughs> right? Done in 3.8. Gone. All documentation removed. <laughs> right? Works for me. Okay, good. Sorry. You were quiet. I was like, did I misunder, misremember that? No, yeah, no. Yeah. In order to be able to install drivers on this, if could definition of a condition for the action that is controlled, can't you do that just by overriding the MSI process drivers action? How uh, would it be per? Well, it'd be for the, see, be per you can't set this per driver. You can't set this per driver because then they just start colliding. So you'd have to override this. But as long as you can override the action, you can already do this by doing. And if not, oh it seems God. like that would be the fix: is to change MSI process driver such that it could be overridable. Which is in to fix, and we don't have the code for it. Yeah, it's in our. Um, it's in our, our. We own the Wix lib for that, not the code. It's not in the DLL. It's in the scheduling of the custom action. That's on our side. Right, scheduling. So we again, we, we can't add it at a per driver level. No, no, not not per driver, but you could override the action MSI process drivers and give it a condition. True. I guess that's all they're asking for here. That's that's well, I, I think they want a condition on the driver, but we're not going to give them that because we can't do all the scenarios. Right. So instead, their workaround is to schedule the condition on MSI process drivers. Yeah. 
that's that's the solution that we have available to us. That's true. Yeah, we can't do anything more than what you can already do with the code. Yes, but we can control whether the custom action is run at install time by allowing you to provide a condition of the whole MSI process driver action. Which presumably, well, no, yeah, anyway, yes, there you go. But even then, you shouldn't be conditioning it off of that. You should be conditioning off your components. So this is all wrong. Ugh. Anyway, I, I just don't trust Diffix enough to, hand, to play correctly with component conditions, so that might be the problem. But this isn't the right way to do it anyway. But this would be a workaround if Diffix does the wrong thing on the driver. Hey, um, I don't care a lot. Um, are you suggesting this is I, I, the workaround and close it? Uh, here, just a second. Let me pull up my command prompt over top of everything. Uh, Diffix app. Oh, where is this? Wixlib. Execute immediate. Oh, I always forget if it can be overridden by default. No, you have to you have to opt in, right, with overridable. I think so. So I don't do this enough. I always forget. So you can't currently override it. Oh. Oh wait, no. Here it is. Mm. Yeah, no, you know, might not be able to do that because it's a custom action. No, custom actions can make them overridable. All right, that would be the fix if we want to do this. All right, is to make the custom action here. Um, I'm looking at the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess... It's a custom action string before or after overridable. Right. So it is not overridable today. So we would okay. need to mark line 13 and 14 in the to fix app, yada yada, as overridable. Okay. okay. But 3x? Sure. But still, the right way to do this is to condition your component correctly. But that assumes that to fix plays correctly. Good point. Which I never again trust. Require duplicate copy files before duplicate? Oh, the copy file action. Before that, that, that. Okay, so this <laughs> same answer here, right? Yes, this is this would be a this is the same thing. They want to make it overridable. Before, after sequence, do not on air. But yeah, driver sequence has nothing to do with the scheduling. Yeah, it's a little concerning. Well, all right, this bug is wrong. Um, the other bug will get them what they kind of want in this case. So yeah. So yeah, basically the trick for both of these is to allow that to be overridable. So I think you can get rid of one, this install execute one we're not doing, and the driver condition, we could support them by allowing them to change the condition by making it overridable. Sorry, why? I'm confused. Sorry. 3603. Yeah. Why couldn't we do this one with overriding? Well, you could. Sorry. Yes, you could. That's how you would do it. You do the same for both of them. Right. All right, fine. I was just trying to get rid of one bug and keep one oh, I solution. See. That's all. But yeah, you're right. It's the same solution for both of these in the end. Okay. They say overridable would not make sense, but maybe that. And I'm like, oh, that's about the only one you get. So. Yeah. Um, when a C sharp custom action temp directories. Um, ex. Uh, Okay, 
so DTF should clean up its temp directories. That could go in 3x. Kind of surprised it doesn't clean up, but I'm not terribly thrilled with the SFXCA sometimes, so sure. Um, so yeah, 3x. Not that we have anyone to work on it, but sure. Sure. Binder variable assembly information isn't supported. Wow. Informational version? Wow. I'm sure that's true. Human readable string from an assembly. Sure. We could add that. <laughs> 3x? Is that how we fill in the existing ones for, for uh, assemblies? By reading the attributes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's, hey, yet another standard attribute that you could read that we don't. So, I don't know, maybe we should make this less deterministic and just go, whatever you put here, we'll go try to, <laughs> I don't know, that's probably dangerous. Anyway. Um, Thank you for so, not finishing the sentence. <laughs> uh, it'd be crazy. Anyway, it could be done in 3x. Uh, it would be nice if there's a way to control their behavior of reboots. Didn't we already have a bug open on this? Or maybe this is the one. I've seen this before, I swear. There's a difference between HKLM and HKCU. And it's really funny because Burn actually started in HKCU, but then it wouldn't, wouldn't cause the reboot to happen again. And so, um, but yeah, I think we should do this feature. Um, I do think it would be nice to be able to do the right thing. This is so busted. I dislike this. Run once? Yeah, I wish they would have got this right in run once. Although, honestly, I don't know how they could have got it right. But it it's probably best that we let them, because I've, I've known apps that don't like being started as a different user, and so this would be a better option for them, even with the second elevation prompt. Does that work at all? Do you actually get the prompt? I thought that was a problem with run once, where... Yeah. You get the prompt. Because the HKCU okay. happens when you have the user log in. Or HKLM will start with the machine or whatever. Oh, the rules are different for run versus run once. Yeah, I think so. I think a per user run, you don't even get a prompt. It just fails? It just, it, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, well, I think this would be a good thing for us to revisit. Um, you think it's a 3x thing? I'm fine if it's a 4x thing. It's probably never going to happen in 3x, so yeah. Uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Burn display product updates without uninstall change. What? You want to put stuff in ARP without anybody any way to remove it? Does that seem wrong? That make that doesn't remove the whole purpose of uninstall features statement. It's like it's not uninstall features; it's display features. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I'm not clear what they're asking for here. They want both disable, remove, and disable um, modify, and so there's no uninstall button. Some updates can be neither uninstalled nor changed, but they're still displayed. It'd be well, nice to allow updates. a push. Yeah, well, this, this is updates, but whatever. It'd be nice to have a patch bundle to display in the same manner. Basically means that you created an uninstallable patch bundle. Right. Which, which exists. Not from a bundle point of view. A bundle could always remove itself. But what if a bundle has nothing but uninstallable patches? Well, then they're going to get tagged. Not to uninstallable. Ugh. Uh, this is so wrong. Maybe we should keep it just to force them to go, well, I can't get rid of this, so we better make all our patches uninstallable. <laughs> yes. Um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how common they are anymore. Um, but, I mean, even security updates are uninstallable. They'll scream at you, please don't. We recommend you don't, but but I but yeah, I mean it's it's too easy to get into a state where you can't uninstall a patch. So 
Yeah. I'm, I'm much happier with this than with um, the idea of not showing an update, not, or not showing an ARP entry. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. Meh. Uh, I would say this is not a 3x thing. I'm, not even, that's, I'm even wondering if it's a 4. Yeah. I, I, I say we resolve this like that. It's like, eh, no. But, gosh, these things. It's so weird. If I could find some actual examples. Well, I mean, they have examples of Microsoft doing this, but it's like, no. Well, but do they? I, I'm not. They say Silverlight and any, Microsoft Update, but Microsoft I'm Office Update. Any Office Update that isn't uninstallable. I mean, uh, maybe maybe the rules changed. You know, maybe Office 2003, you could run into that. Uh, you know. No, I, I say we don't put this in burn. Let's not blow up burn with yet more configuration because we could we could do all these permutations forever. And instead, we just go look. If you really have to mark it, put it in your BA, and when they click it, you could say no, and then you can deal with the UI yourself. That's true. You can always block in your BA. Yeah, and that way the blame will be you know it won't be you know well I can't uninstall this at all. It'll be a message that then you have to try to explain yourself in that message, and the customers will know that you purposely did it instead of something weird removing your ability to uninstall it, right? Actually, that's so. a good point, because if you just remove the uninstall entry, there's no explanation. That's right. No, I, I, again, this is our typical, you know, move this, these UI things to the BA. Good point. And, I mean, it's not great for the user to click on something and then get a message, but still, this is not the way we want generally people to move. So. Well, but, but ARP doesn't have have the ability to to show a message in, in this case. It just doesn't show the button or it doesn't show the, you know, the command in the menu. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, there are there are cases here. Like I see right now, Silverlight has some updates that are not uninstallable. <laughs> Who does that? And I don't know what MSI does if you set both of these to false. Or both, if you don't set ARP no modify and ARP no remove, you maybe can do that too. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm okay with this. I think it's. We'll just say yeah. Put it in your BA if you want to do that, and then you know, honestly, you should probably put a message up that says why the user can't uninstall it, yeah. like a link to your web page that explains why you are leaving stuff sign on the machine forever and ever. <laughs> Which may be, you know, because you could say something that is. Um, uh, please remove the main package. Uninstalling this will damage the main package, right? That may be the answer. Or something. Yeah. You know, if you want to remove our product, remove our product in whole, not from our patch, which then people can go, oh. And that, that solves the not uninstallable patches problem, so yeah. I'm, I'm fine with this. My map should work as a child of website. Uh, I bet that's probably true. Okay. I I we could take this in three X. All right. I expect my maps can be at the root, and we probably don't allow them. Uninstall does not remove internet shortcut. Really? No. If I click F5, it disappears. This is the problem of oh. the desktop not refreshing. I see. Is there some way to tell the desktop to refresh? I don't know. If, um, well, not that I know of. And I'm not sure that anything else like, you know, broadcasting the settings change, any change message, whatever that one is. Like we have an existing feature request to do for um, mm -hmm. verbs. Yep. I don't know if that's sufficient either. It's gone. The shell just hasn't updated the desktop. I don't right. know what we can do here. Well, that's the 
that's it. Like that's my only. I either this bug is yeah the shell needs to refresh or it's a bug and we need to call the method you know the function that tells the shell to refresh. I don't if there is such a thing. And you know I'm. I, I have a limited ability to care about someone who creates desktop shortcuts. There is that, isn't there? Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. So, yeah, it says there's a link to it. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, sample code. Someone provided a sample. Oh, that's probably for the report in the book. There you go. Um, yeah, we could take it as a bug in 3x and say the solution is to call refresh at the end or whatever. And someone can take it. There was someone at Microsoft that was looking at fixing this bug that I knew. And I don't know if he, or not this bug, but a near shortcut bug. But anyway, yeah. And we can put it in 3x. It's an internal invisible call. Yeah, right. Works for me. Control element property not whoa, value treated correctly. Uh, explains the property control to be linked. Uh, right. So this is documentation's not clear. No, that depends on whether the. Okay, I yeah. So this is a. I want the documentation to be clearer about what's going on here. As far as I can tell. Okay. Um, fine with that being a doc bug. Or, sure. I mean, if there's some way of making it clearer, I don't spend a lot of time in UI things, so. Well, uh, th this is the, the basic problem we have with the Wix doc that you know, <laughs> simply wraps an MSI, the MSI doc. doc. Sometimes. Okay. More often than not. Uh, true. Yeah, I'm fine with it as a doc bug. I, yeah. Okay. Ability to install IS certificate but not create website? What? Oh, I'd like to install this but not requiring the associated website because it already exists. Um. Yeah, no, there's a way of doing this. You have to create the condition, the components, and all that kind of stuff. So this is possible. It's not as pretty as it would nice it could be and all that kind of good stuff, um, but that is the way the custom actions work. So anyway, this is possible with the whole... Yeah, you have to create a finder and a website that creates a component. And it's a lot. It's duplicate, unfortunately. It's duplicate effort, or duplicate authoring. Mostly duplicate authoring. Um, I should also have the option to not remove the certificate and or binding during uninstall. That's called marking your component permanent. You, you shouldn't do that, but yeah. So, so mm, this isn't this isn't a bug. <laughs> um, this can be done. So we can resolve this as possible. It takes work, possible, and then the last thing is mark the thing as permanent. Wix library does not support heat harvest project. I don't care. Okay. Library? Oh. The library project. Sure. Someone should fix that. I see. This uh, not, library does not support that. Right. Right. Uh, sure. Yes, that could be fixed in 3x if they wanted. Uh, well, if it's simply adding another output type to the condition there, then sure. Yeah, except that now you're going to start having this kick in for library projects that never had it done before. But that's probably fine. Yeah, this this is probably fine in 3x because you have to add the harvest anyway. So yeah, cool. We could take that in 3x. Okay. 
Then deployable assemblies not captured. I'm sure they're not. <laughs> yeah, the heat process doesn't. Yeah, I'm sure heat. Yeah, who knows? Th those things came in after all that. Sure. It, this could be fixed in 3x2, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Yep, cool. Sounds fine. They could do that. Could be fixed. All right. 3491. 34, I guess, 74. Custom action build does not update the binary timestamp. And the PE header is not updated with the UTC of the date time is edited, but retains from as originally compiled. Oh, that's cute. I agree. We should fix that. <laughs> 3x is fine. Uh, just a moment. Getting caught up. Oh, sorry. Uh, Am I going too fast? I mean, we're getting out. It's like, yeah, we could fix that. And it would be nice if that did the right thing. I'm kind of surprised it doesn't break the build more that the MS build doesn't get upset about this the build yeah. system would use timestamps they should be correct I mean so I, I'm kind of surprised that the MS build isn't broken for these but I don't build these things anyway so it's like yeah okay sure incremental build broken on managed code custom actions maybe that's probably what might happen yeah, that's fair. I, I mean, I don't know what's going on, but it probably should do the right thing. Wow, but this is also talking about the timestamp in the PE header. In the PE header? Yeah. Is it, oh, did I miss that? It's only the PE header, not the file itself? Oh, actually, that's a good question. It doesn't say. Actually, now that you mention it, I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, you're right. I don't care about that. Oh, gosh. Wow. You're right. It is just the image times. I don't care. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, meh. <laughs> we need a name for that, but that, <laughs> that resolution. Minus zero. Look, if he came with the fix and it was all nice and clean, sure, but I don't care. They say they have a fix for it, but we need them to send a pull request. I require to author a payload for a thousand dependency files of a third-party installer to be bundled in my bootstrap, but right now there's no easy to harvest. Whole directory includes subdirectories. Heat for burnt. Seriously? A thousand of dependency files for a third-party installer? Oh my gosh. What dependency is that? files or packages. They must be dependency files for an exe. Like it's some oh. exe that must have thousands of files. That's the only thing that makes sense. Because if it was an yeah. MSI, we'd do the right thing. So it must be an exe that has thousands of external files. Uh, sure, we could take this. I mean, if someone wants to write this feature, they could totally do it. I'm also be fine if this is resolved as meh. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I'm, yeah. So, uh, what do you want? L let's resolve this as meh. I mean, we're not going to. This, this is not a general problem. It's the first time we've seen it. So, uh, write a little script to do it. It's mostly going to be a throwaway, one offs kind of stuff. You hope. Yeah, really. Functionality to harvest it. But did I click the same one? I must have clicked. Name, value, pair, test, do not work properly. You know, oh, this is Lux. This is Lux. <laughs> I've got I to move it from release to release. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it in 3x. Hey, hey, isn't this John? <laughs> John, you want to just fix it? <laughs> yeah, really. At this point, I... <laughs> uh, maybe he was, he's was he been sitting around on triage for as long as... As J A H J H A lets me, I assume that's your, yeah, that's your employer. Uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> all right, fair enough. 
cool. Well, uh, um, I'm fine with it in three acts if you still think it should be fixed. I, I'm assuming you think it should be fixed. It sounds like John's getting around to fixing it, so. Bob? That's a bad precedent to, uh, you know, um, to have me just, yeah, I'll fix it, I swear. Release to release. Until someone actually fixes it for me. Well, that's what 3x is for, because we didn't have that's 3x before. That's why exactly we have right. the 3x bucket. It's like, here, here's 3x. Now, if someone wants to, take something out of that bucket and pull it into a numbered release. Yep. Or a, a numbered minor release. All right, cool. Maybe 3.9, if John's paperwork will come through. There you go. All right, so we'll put it in 3x, and it'll be great. Ooh, a dark crash. I'm so excited. Um, it should not crash. We should fix this in 3x. <laughs> wow, yeah. I'm sure we don't do the right thing with an MSP or something. Like, no files. <laughs> doesn't actually patch. It's an empty patch, and then it crashes. Probably doesn't. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Fails to recognize con as an output. I don't care. <laughs> no, uh. no, 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 no. No. Oh, it doesn't like the colon. No, no, it's colon colon. They're trying to create a standard out. Well, that's, <laughs> it's, but, it's a stream. Yeah, but value cannot be null parameter named path. Well, the, oh, create maybe, directory. Oh, that's right, because we always try to create a file a directory now. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I don't care. Does anybody care? I, I don't care. All right, we'll resolve it. Bye-bye. Uh, patch family action wrap element. To reschedule, resequence, recondition? Well, we have the custom action ref. Or when you change... Yeah, but see, action ref's not going to work. Well, I guess it could be made to work. All the actions are named, so you'd have to have a gazillion <laughs> actions with refs on it, or you'd create something like an action ref. Uh, I add, remove, reschedule, resequence, recondition standard actions in a patch. Wow. <laughs> I can almost see reconditioning. Rarely. Rescheduling, maybe? I don't know how you're going to remove with action ref, but okay. You're not going to remove. And you shouldn't have to add. No, we would have added everything you needed. Yeah. Unless patch doesn't run through and add actions that you didn't have originally, but it should. It should, right? Because you would built the new image. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. So. Although, Although if you're patch using family. Filter. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking. Mm. The. <clears throat> Filtering is going to exclude everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Well, this is kind of interesting. I guess, yeah. If you add a reg key in a patch, but you didn't have one originally, yeah, you may have, you to, have do that. to do this to get right registry values. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know about reconditioning and all that. That's just kind of scary, but whatever. Um, I don't know. It seems like a reasonable thing to do in 3X. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'll share permission strips, user added permissions. Well, that doesn't sound great. Although, it's kind of what we do. Interesting. 3x and I mean uh, kind of it's like yeah I mean, unless we take the attitude that yeah when we create a share we write the permissions and you should list them all so, well, I mean, cause isn't that what repair the, does but I, I don't know right yeah and this is different than the, the previous thing of, of you know we overwrite the inherited stuff 
I don't know. This one's kind of interesting. I mean, like, yeah. How do you I... repair the permissions then? It's like, so, you know, they messed them all up and they added a bunch of permission stuff and they screwed it up and then you want to repair to get it back the way it should be. Oh, well, we don't do that. We leave all the messed up stuff behind. Frickin' how do I repair it? Yeah, I mean, what happens, what happens if you add a duplicate ACL? I'm assuming this is an ACL thing. Oh, no, this all is... Ackle. Yeah, it's all ACL. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know that there's a single right answer. This might have to be an opt-in. I don't know. It's always felt funky to me to create a share from an installer, but... Um, so... Yeah, this is, this is, uh, nasty. I think the, yeah, I think the only way to do this is to add a switch because I wouldn't want to change the behavior even even in a breaking change or in a breaking release yeah I, I, I think Christopher and John are right. I think the the right thing here is to go look. We stop permissions. If you want people to be able to add stuff to them, use a group. It's the only way that this ends up being uh, item potent. Everything else just gets insane. Yeah. Basically goes, look, we own this file share. We created it. We own it. Yeah. You can add people to this group, which we will then take the group away when we're gone because we own the group too. But you can control the membership of the group, and we won't destroy that. That doesn't mean that groups are messed up, but our groups aren't item potent, but we already have that problem somewhere else, and I don't know any way around that. We bottleneck it down to one place. I think that's the right thing to do. That works for me. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We're moving on. Impose conditions directly on remove folder EX. No. Well, uh, we already, yeah, this is a basic thing of, yeah, and here's the example. Well, um, they have the example, not yeah. upgrading code, not upgrading product code, but. Right. No. Um, don't care. Meh. They came with the fix and did it all right. Basically, it's a matter of going and marking this thing overridable, but I don't think we should do that. They should do the right thing with their components. Well, no, this this is, uh, oh, that's actually really interesting. Sorry. Can, can you just do this with component conditions? Yes. That's, they actually say that out. At the moment you impose a condition, you must be in the component with a condition like that. I'm like, right. They don't want that. They would also, it would also be useful to be able to do it this way. Basically, they want a global condition, and they want all the components. It's an and in the end, I think. Yeah, I, I would almost say, I, I, almost, I like the idea of being able to say, <clears throat> don't nuke this during uninstall, or rather during upgrade. Only nuke it during uninstall, but you can accomplish that with component code or component condition. Right. So therefore, I don't care. Right. Meh. Yeah. Burn uninstalls upgraded MSI during rollback. Oh, that's bad. Did Heath ever get a fix for this? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, this this is brutal. Uh, 3x. Brutal, no. Um, 
I, I didn't say it was wrong. It's just no, it's a I brutal understand. bug. Well, it's a brutal. It's a it's a huge amount of design and all that to, to get it it'll right. It'll all be transparent in the end. Transparent, but it's also a pretty big behavior change from what we have today. Well, we could put it in four X. Uh, unless we're saying we're never going to come up with a solution for this. Well, no, I think we should. I think there are probably ways of doing it. Yeah. It's hard, but yes. It's hard. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm okay with it in 3X if, you know, maybe... I think we, we have to keep this, but I don't know when I would get to it. Like, I don't have a timeline that I could get to it, but I don't want to forget it either. Yeah, no, I Because honestly, I had forgotten this issue. I'd pushed it completely out of my mind and not thought about it for a very long time. <laughs> nice. Doesn't mean that the problem went away, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So it, it could be in fixed in 3X, I think. Okay. I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> have well, not, it's we'll not easy. That. So, but if someone gets into it and goes, oh, yeah, here's all the things you have to do to fix it, be like, you're right, that's exactly how to fix it. That's not getting fixed in 3X. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we would know then. All right. I'll put heat the 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 generates candle o o four seven type lib elements non advertised and therefore requires a parent thing. Type lib doesn't populate the Win sixty four isn't examined at all. In fact, oh that's cute. That's cute. Cool, so we're not having 64-bit harvesting of type lips correctly or something. It's like some cross between that. Um, 3X? Sure. I mean, it, it's some crazy type lip registration that eventually would be nice to hunt it down and fix it, but... Yeah. I don't know. Makes sense. Just what they're saying down here makes sense. Not that I know how to fix it, but it makes sense. Okay. Visual editing for Wix projects. Uh, yeah, we should totally do this. Uh, can we just close this and move on? <laughs> yes, uh, we should do this, but this isn't going to help us do it. I don't think we need a bug to remember. No. Uh, uh, we need someone to say they're going to do it. Performance counters. Lifetime is set to process. It seems that performance counter is created. Wait, it's not. Yes. Nice. Well, you have an assignment agreement, Christopher. You can always share. The attached archive contains one hair mess. Uh, performance count. Lifetime is set to process. And during the runtime, the attached error appears. I don't understand. Oh, the performance counter is created in such a way it does not allow to register performance counters as process lifecycle. Oh, we always pick one static. I see. I'm assuming. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because we're always... Or we're erring somewhere. Yeah, sure. They've done a lot of information. Yeah, it'd be great to go hunt down the root of that. They've done some good stuff. It, should, it seems like it should be done in 3X. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming it's additive. More information. Wow. They want to add all this to doc? Well, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I think they actually provide a doc. I think we could just take this if we found a place to put it. Unless you disagree with the content in here. That's the problem with having a writer in charge of that. I would find all sorts of nitpicky stuff to do there, but... But... Is it, if it, I, I'm worried about it being wrong. That's, yeah... That I don't know. 
I'm fine to take it in three X. Okay. Conditions not supporting the Wix user project file. Wah. I don't. Why aren't they supported? I didn't. This is a votive thing, right? Because that user file isn't Wix. Yeah, right? so, yeah. Um, I'd say put it in 3x and votive and say, yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. Probably nobody's looked at this stuff for a long time. Ever, if ever. Cool. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. All right. Where are we at? Two more minutes. Let's see how much more we can go. Support for UTF-8 SQL scripts. We should totally do that. Sure. Yeah, we could fix that. That could be even fixed in 3X. Should be able to just figure out, oh, it's UTF-8. Yay, go. That code is very, 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 very old. I think that SQL code was written in 9x days, so it doesn't surprise me that it's only ASCII or Unicode, <laughs> like very simplistic way of thing. Heat fails to gather information from an assembly. Uh, contains a com, then heat will fail. File not found, uh, or is right. It's not assembly, otherwise. Um, <laughs> reg hasn't worked. Heat doesn't work. It's trying to pull the self-register stuff out. Wait, do we? Does does heat do the reg hasn't? Yeah, heat does the reg hasn't stuff today, right? Yeah. So reg hasn't works, and this doesn't. Okay. So I, yeah, someone could look at it deeper. I mean, it, I don't know why heat would be failing with the file not found on that, because it, unless it actually ends up doing a, I wonder if it executes that function. I, don't, I actually don't know what the regasm stuff inside heat is doing here, so or whatever it's doing. It's probably some magic that Rajasm does that heat doesn't do correctly, and so it dies when it hits something like this. And so it's a matter of figuring out what that is and all that kind of good stuff. Is that the only thing that heat does with an assembly? Is look for Rajasm? No, it, it'll pull. There's other things it pulls out. I thought it could be other things. You're right. This is one of those that you're probably going to end up needing the assembly to do anything with it. I'm okay with this in 3x. Yeah. If someone some, can, if someone can hunt it down. That would be pretty cool. That's interesting. I guess. Yeah. Pro processor. Be nice if did a file exists. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Uh. Oh, well, I well. Let me look at the example. Uh, this this uh, this can be a preprocessor extension. Okay, right, this is preprocessor extension. I don't think we're going to pull this in the native one. So we can close this as yeah, you can write your own preprocessor extension. Right. All right, let's try to create full detailed template based on Wix UI Advanced. What? Provide a detailed UI installer based on that so that all at least. Very common star UI that already works. Okay. I don't know what this means. I, I agree with John. I think he, he somebody wants an example, and we're not doing that in a bug. So, 
I mean, you could say it's a dock bug, and you could say we could dock more, but, bah. So yeah, I know. Detail. I mean, this is a dock bug. They want us to write a detailed UI installer template, so you can. The user needs to walk through all the steps and all that kind of stuff. I don't. I still don't. I don't know what they mean by detailed template. So that the users need to walk through all the steps. We actually used to have an example. <laughs> it was Wix. Wix used you Wix UI advanced. Back in the three five days. Oh, I see. They want oh they want the Wix code, I see, that uses the UI advanced template. I could see that. Yeah, all right. But it's not a fine, it's a doc bug. It's like can you please write more doc about how to use UI? Do we not have a lot on? I thought UI Advanced had a walkthrough already, or that told you all the things you had to set because it has some special stuff. John says Mondo does, but Wix UI Advanced doesn't. Mondo's the worst, worst of the set. Yeah, well, it's funny that it's the one that's best documented. Yeah. All right, I'm yeah, I'm fine. Maybe it's a doc bug, not. and it can go live on 3x, and sure. someone could go write a lot. In the file and date timestamps for files in the cabinet. Is there a way to set date and time? Missing, if not, build process. Yeah, you set the times of the MSI. You set the files. We use whatever the files are on disk. No, we're not going to do this feature. <laughs> we're not going to let you specify in each file the date and timestamp you should have in the cabinet. Just set it outside the Wix process. Well, they presumably are baking the version number into the timestamp. Fine. They can set it on disk with their own right. build process thing. I mean, whatever they want to do, they can do that. We're not going to... I mean, that's a whole lot of extra... extra no, we just don't do that. So the answer is we use whatever is on the file system, and we'll go with that. Project Harvester doesn't unescape linked. I'm just going to try to get through two more here. Project Harvester doesn't unescape linked files with spaces. Actually, Blair might have already fixed this, right? Because he did oh. the thing with the parentheses. That's right. This might be fixed. That whole linked files was a problem, and someone did a fix, and then Blair did another fix. Yeah. Um, you want to resolve this to Blair and have him double check it? And yeah. Email that way? So assign it to him and then resolve it and say, didn't you fix this already? If not, please open again. That works. All right. It's kind of cheap, but it's what he gets for not showing up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, software should never be installed to local app data folder. It needs to be an app data folder oh. in the roaming profile. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't put it in the frickin' roaming profile. No. 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 I, I see the point. I see the point. If you put it in roaming, then your apps roam. Except they probably don't work afterwards. Only if they have no other stuff outside of the folder. Oh, jeepers. This goes on forever. Yeah. No, this is... Yeah, I remember this thread. This was a huge, long thread. No, <laughs> not roaming, local, done. <laughs> I don't know why people put stuff in roaming. Mostly because hardly, most people don't see their stuff roam because you don't get into situations in, unless you're in an enterprise to roam and most people aren't dealing with it there and or they don't use multiple machines so they don't actually see the problems that it creates. They're just like, oh, well, everything should go here. So no, that bug's wrong. Let's just do these last two real quick. Harvest excess links are broken.
No, they're not. <laughs> nice. Oh, these link. Maybe these are broken. Nope, that works. Gosh, that looks so much prettier, doesn't it? I don't look at our documentation online enough. All right, cool. That looks good to me. That's fixed. Probably fixing our huge wave of things. Yay, something's got better. Source file sys variable. Please consider source file name as and sys source name similar to the target name helpful for fragments. For example, what? source name. So they want the name of the file? The source file. I thought we already had that. We had something like that because I know there's like source path, file path or something. There's because I use this all the time. It's my 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 favorite way to create an installer really fast is I install one file that is the source file itself. We must have something right. like this. Um, we have wait, where'd it go? Built-in variables, current dir source file path, which is a full path. I see. Oh, he wants name. Dir. Yeah, he wants name with and without extension. I see. Okay, we could take in 3x. I mean, it's additive. Yep. All right. 3309, I mean, sure, we could do that. 3309, 3309. So there's one, two, three. So we got through, what, 40 bugs again? A little over 40 bugs? No, 45. almost 50. 45. Sweet, 45 bugs in a little over an hour. Thank you. I guess. It's all gentlemen. Um, have a good rest of your day, and we'll pick up here again on Thursday. That's all we got. See you later. Bye. Bye.